Ever wondered why we make the decisions we do, why some choices feel instinctive while others require a lot of thought? Well, the secret lies within our brain. It's a fascinating dichotomy of cognitive systems at play, as proposed by Daniel Kahneman, a renowned psychologist and Nobel laureate. Imagine two teams in your brain. The first team, dubbed System 1, is like the sprinter of your cognitive process. It's fast, it's intuitive, and it's automatic. This system doesn't need your conscious effort to function. It's the one you turn to when you need to make quick judgments, simple calculations, or perform familiar tasks. It's the team that catches the ball mid-air before it hits your face, or tells you the answer is 2, when you're asked what's 1 plus 1. It's the fast-thinking, instinctive part of your cognition. Now meet the second team, System 2. This team is more like a chess player, strategic and thoughtful. It's responsible for deliberate thinking and problem-solving. It's the system that kicks in when you're faced with a complex math problem, or when you're trying to figure out the best route to avoid traffic. It requires effort, attention, and is voluntarily controlled. So, we have these two cognitive systems, working in tandem, shaping our cognition and decision-making process. System 1 is the automatic, intuitive, quick response system, while System 2 is the deliberate, problem-solving, careful thinking system. They're like two sides of the same coin, each playing a crucial role in how we perceive, process, and interact with the world around us. But here's the catch. These systems aren't perfect. They have their quirks and can sometimes lead us astray. But by recognizing and understanding these systems, we can make better informed decisions and navigate the complexities of life more efficiently. In essence, these two systems shape our cognition and decision-making process. So the next time you make a decision, ask yourself, is this system one or system two at work? Understanding the interplay between these systems can open up a whole new world of understanding about how we think, how we act, and ultimately, how we live. But our cognitive systems aren't foolproof, they can be biased and prone to errors. Let's delve a little deeper into this fascinating world of cognitive biases and errors. System 1, the part of our mind that operates automatically and intuitively, can be influenced by environmental cues. This is known as priming. For example, if you're shown a picture of a library, you're likely to speak more quietly than if you'd been shown a picture of a bustling city street. This happens without any conscious effort. It's System 1 doing what it does best, making snap judgments. However, this automatic operation of System 1 can lead to biases. It's like having a pair of tinted glasses that color our perception of the world. We see things not as they are but through the lens of our preconceived notions and environmental influences. Our cognitive systems also have a peculiar tendency to opt for the path of least resistance. We often substitute easier questions for harder ones without even realizing it. Instead of pondering on a complex question like, what's the meaning of life, we might find ourselves answering a simpler one like, what do I want to have for dinner? It's a cognitive shortcut, a way for our brain to save energy, but it can lead to errors in our thinking and decision-making process. Statistics is another area where our brains often stumble. We're not naturally equipped to handle large numbers or complex probabilities. We tend to rely on insufficient data and make decisions based on our limited understanding. We might, for instance, judge the risk of a rare event like a plane crash based on a single news report, rather than considering the actual statistical likelihood. So, you see, while our cognitive systems are remarkable, they are also fraught with biases and errors. They can lead us astray, color our judgments and cause us to make poor decisions. But there's a silver lining here. By recognizing these biases and understanding where we can go wrong, we can start to correct our course. Understanding these biases and errors is the first step to making better decisions. Let's delve deeper into one such bias, the anchoring effect. Picture this, you're shopping for a new car and the salesman presents you with a price. That initial price, whether it's high or low, becomes your anchor, your starting point. Even if you haggle and negotiate, that first price has already influenced your perception of what the car is worth. This is the anchoring effect in action. The anchoring effect is a cognitive bias where our estimates and decisions are influenced by an initial piece of information, or anchor. It's a phenomenon that affects us all, often without us being aware of it. It's not just about prices and money, either. It can influence all kinds of estimates, from the weight of a fruit to the number of jelly beans in a jar. The most fascinating aspect of the anchoring effect is that it continues to influence our judgment even when the anchor number is irrelevant or wildly off the mark. For instance, 
If you're asked to guess a person's age, and you're initially told they're 95, your guess is likely to be higher than if you were initially told they were 25. That initial anchor has a powerful pull, skewing our estimates and judgments. It's important to note that the anchoring effect doesn't just influence individuals, it can have larger societal implications too. Market prices, salary negotiations, legal settlements, they're all susceptible to the anchoring effect. Overcoming the anchoring effect isn't easy. It requires conscious effort, critical thinking, and a willingness to question our own judgments. But understanding the anchoring effect is the first step. By recognizing the power of that initial anchor, we can strive to make decisions that are more informed, more objective, and ultimately, more accurate. So, the next time you're negotiating a deal or making an estimate, remember the anchoring effect. Be aware of the initial numbers presented to you and question their relevance and accuracy. This awareness can help you make better judgments and smarter decisions. It's a small but powerful way to combat the inherent biases of our brains. So, the next time you're negotiating a deal or making an estimate, remember the anchoring effect. Another cognitive bias that influences our decisions is the availability heuristic. This heuristic leads us to place a higher value on information that comes to mind quickly. We give this information more weight, not because it's more accurate or more important, but simply because it's more readily available. Let's imagine you're asked to assess the likelihood of a shark attack. You might immediately recall vivid news reports of deadly shark encounters. These dramatic stories are memorable and therefore easily accessible in your mind. As a result, you might overestimate the actual risk of a shark attack, which is statistically quite low. Similarly, you might judge that plane crashes are more common than car accidents because plane crashes make headlines worldwide, while car accidents, unfortunately, are a daily occurrence and rarely make the news. In reality, car accidents are far more common and cause far more fatalities than plane crashes. What's fascinating is not just that we overestimate the probability of events based on vivid examples or personal experiences, but also how we construct narratives to explain statistical data, even when no true cause exists. We have an innate desire to make sense of the world around us, to find patterns and causality. So, when we hear that more people are buying organic food, and that rates of certain diseases are dropping, we might quickly conclude that organic food is the reason for the health improvement, even though there may be no scientific evidence to support this claim. This tendency to create stories is a testament to our creativity and our need for order. But it can also lead us astray. When we build narratives based on limited data or personal experiences, we risk overlooking other important factors or misinterpreting the data altogether. The availability heuristic can be a helpful tool allowing us to make quick decisions based on past experiences, but it can also skew our perception of reality, leading us to make decisions based on emotions rather than facts. It's crucial to be aware of this bias and to question our initial judgments especially when making important decisions. This bias often leads us to make decisions based on emotions rather than facts. So, what can we take away from all this? Let's wrap up our journey through the labyrinth of human cognition, as masterfully illustrated in Daniel Kahneman's Thinking, Fast and Slow. We've learned that our minds operate on two distinct systems. System 1, the intuitive, fast and automatic process that handles quick judgments, simple calculations and familiar tasks. And then there's System 2, the deliberate, slow and effortful process responsible for problem solving and concentration. But it's not all smooth sailing. System 1, despite its efficiency, is susceptible to biases and can be swayed by environmental cues. It's like a helpful but somewhat naive friend, eager to jump to conclusions, often substituting easier questions for harder ones, leading us astray. Our minds, it seems, have a peculiar relationship with statistics, making decisions based on insufficient data more often than we'd like to admit. We've also explored the anchoring effect, where our estimates are influenced by initial anchor numbers. Anchors, it seems, have a knack for affecting our judgment, even when they're irrelevant. It's like trying to guess the weight of a fruit while holding a heavy rock. The rock will inevitably influence your guess. Don't forget the availability heuristic. We tend to overestimate the probability of events based on vivid examples or personal experiences. We're natural storytellers, constructing narratives to explain statistical data, even when no true cause exists. But it's not all doom and gloom. By understanding these cognitive biases, by recognizing the pitfalls of intuition, we can take the reins of our decision-making process. 
we can learn to pause, to engage our system 2 to question the quick judgments of system 1. We can make better decisions and improve our lives. In the end, understanding how our minds work can help us navigate the complexity of decision-making and enhance our lives.